Good morning. How are you all today? I'm extremely fine and had a lovely breakfast. So uh, it's very, very uh, heartening to be here. I would like to thank uh, NPS uh, School for having me to share some of my thoughts and uh, the ideas and what I have been. So listening to the earlier speaker, fantastic, a lot of uh, learnings. So it was me. Um, I started growing up without realizing that I had the problem of seeing because every need of mine was so well taken care by my mom, dad, uncles, aunts, on either side because both belong to the same village. So, but as I started growing four, five years, and subsequently, when I reached the age of six, when children started going to school of my age, but I was not. I think that was a biggest tragedy kind of a thing. I still remember my mother used to sit and cry day and night. But it did not last long. Using some kind of influence, my family managed to get me a place to go and sit in the school. Just go and sit in the school. No admission, no name in the registration, and I was not promoted to the next class. But I just went with my neighbor to whichever class they went to. And I was part of everything they did, especially playing and running around and enjoying every bit in the school. Somehow I developed a lot of interest in number, especially mathematics. I was very good. So when I was two, three years baby, my sister-in-law taught me English and also numbers, both in Kannada and English, and also tables. I could easily recite tables up to 100 and beyond. So this gave, this gave a kind of recognition to me in that school where I was made the in charge of teaching tables to my classmates. So why I am telling you all this is though I was affected with my sight, the exposure I got from my family and from my friends kept me active, alert, and focus on my whatever brilliance I little had. So when I was in around 10 years uh, of age, inspector of schools had come and asked a question. I stood up and answered. So he asked me to come and write on the board. The class teacher told, no, no, no. He is just sitting in the class, sir. He can't see. He's visually challenged. That's when I think it was a turning point. So that person did not stop. He was a very sensitive person. So he came to my house and told my dad, no, no, you've got to put your son to a special school. There are schools for children with visual impairment. They started looking for, and they found one of the best schools in the country. In 1981, I was brought to Bangalore to study in Sri Raman Maharshi Academy for the Blind. And this school was a different world. It was a world for visually challenged. The potentiality I had inherited from the family, I think it was a place for me to unleash with a similar kids like me. But here I realized there were so many kids like me, but they all had so many, many more challenges. I felt I was privileged. The exposure of my family and the learnings in the school, I think, made me what I am today. And built, like Bindu mentioned, a lot of dreams and aspirations. Those days, it was very, very hard. It was very difficult. Absolutely very few or no opportunities for people like 
deafs, blind people, and other disabled in our country. There are many challenges. But hearing from a lot of great people who came from a very humble background, who had to face so many challenges from a very difficult circumstances and made it big. So such people always keeps us inspiration, keeps us inspiring and only motivates us to start thinking big and motivates us to look beyond. Fortunately, the school where I studied had a lot of spiritual influence of Ramakrishna Mission. I had wonderful teachers, especially Swami Nirbhayananda Saraswati, who always kept telling, human potentiality is unlimited. Each individual is capable of getting at least seven Nobel Awards. That is the human potentiality he always stressed. And he always told us, with a lot of examples from mythology, how different people with different circumstances had to overcome and became successful. So these inspirations and learning from Swami Vivekananda's so many writings kept personally me always optimistic. I knew it's not going to be easy. Blindness is going to pose extra more problems. So we have to work more harder than the rest. Being myself an avid cricket lover, cricket maniac, English if I am speaking today, it is from the radio cricket commentary. Though I subsequently went, out, went on and did my masters and everything in English literature, but majority of my words, vocabularies, pronunciation came from radio commentary. If you look back 40, 50 years ago, when TV was just coming, radio was the only uh, means of entertainment. So I personally always stayed with radio, which was my companion and which is my companion till date. So growing up, listening to cricket commentary and developing interest in maths, subsequently joining the school, only kept my thoughts, uh, my dreams big. Because lover of history, reading about a lot of accomplished kings, benevolent kings, who did so much good to so many, because subjects were called as children of the king. A lot of good kings like our Vadeyas and even Ashoka and so many dynasties which motivated me time and again as I continue to grow up. After schooling, went on to do my college in National College. Beautiful college. Dear children, why I'm telling you is kids like you when I was studying, ensured all my needs were looked after. If my problem was left unattended, not supported by friends like you, I think I wouldn't be standing here. So you all can make so much difference to so many from your own self, as Bindu mentioned. We all have to love ourselves first. So, while we look after ourselves, and then we are responsible to look after others. Because we get so much from so many individuals and institutions, starting from our own family, home, institutions like NPS and uh, colleges, country, society. We get so much. It's our opportunity to give back. So, definitely each one of us should have personal ambitions. We have to work for it. It will not just happen by itself. 
We all have to work hard to touch our goal, but not stop there. Keep moving, like Uttishtata Jagrata Manuja, Swami Vivekananda said, stop not still the goal is reached. I say, don't even stop after reaching the goal because you have to reach beyond. So that was my mission from childhood. And after finishing my college and university education, along with my friend, Mr. S. P. Nagesh, who was the biggest motivator and a friend and a guide who kept me pushing, because we always need someone to push. Though we can push ourselves, though we can push others, we also need someone to push. Someone who can push you in the right direction, I think we should just sometimes follow them, listen to them, and get pushed. So about 25 years ago, just to repeat, 25 years ago, me and Nagesh, along with a few friends, set up an organization primarily to focus on all the opportunities we got. We wanted our next generation to get more. And all that we were denied, we wanted our youngsters to get. With this vision, we set up an organization. Definitely we had personal ambitions, personal aspirations. While we did that, we started dreaming for others. Because we are part of society, we know there are so many who are deprived of so many simple privileges. Like Swamiji I mentioned, he also told us, if opportunities are provided at the right time, if opportunities are provided at the right time, disability loses its first three letters. When disability loses its first three letters, what remains? Fantastic. When ability remains, automatically impossible loses its first two letters. Then everything is possible. That's what we were taught. Therefore, blindness for me was never a problem. Yes, it is a challenge. It's a challenge for a sportsman. A cricket lover is always welcome. You can encounter the challenge. You can overcome the challenge and you can emerge successful. So when you are successful, you start dreaming more. You start aspiring more. You want to do more. And you start building more and more to do good for yourself to start. And how long, how much you want. When you are, I don't want to say uh, complacent, but when you feel, yes, you are blessed with all that what you wanted, you have to think for others. I think that's what we did. And when you want to think good for someone, for so many, then you start being good for yourself. When you start being good for yourself, you start doing good for a lot of people. So, dear friends, Samarthanam is an organization founded by us, uh, which is a pan-India, and not only in India, which is across the globe. And it has created many initiatives, which I feel very proud, which enabled people like me to reach beyond with so many ambitions. I don't know how many of you know uh, Cricket for the Blind. Have you heard of Cricket for the Blind? Yes? Who is the current champions of uh, the world in cricket for the blind? India? Yes. We are the current champions in both formats, both T20 and ODI. Thank you. In a cricket crazy nation, when blind had no opportunity to play the game, Samarthanam took it as a mission and took the entire responsibility of managing, governing, fostering and support the game for Cricket for the Blind in 2010. In the last 12 years, when cricket 
was for the blind was rarely heard of. It was our ambition to create a world-class winning team, winning the World Cups. Pakistan was dominating all over. Ever since we took over from 2012, India has won two World Cups of T20 and two ODI World Cups. What personally I wanted to do as a child, I could not, because that time it was not existing much. It just came in 1990 when we started the game, playing with a special cricket ball. Kumar, can you shake the ball, Kumar? So this is a special cricket ball, which makes a rattling noise. So we, that's the cricket ball. So using this ball, entire 10 test playing countries play the game of cricket. So why I'm showing you this is, if there is some deficiency of sight or other arms, it is important for us to make it accessible. So I thank the innovators who made visually impaired play the game. This gave us an opportunity to raise awareness about the human potentiality of visually impaired, which won the recognition of our Honorable Prime Minister, who invited the team twice and felicitated. Ex-captain got Padma Shri, and vice-captain got National Award. So many media spoke about it. So this, I feel, and I feel very proud, we could reach beyond our dreams. So cricket for the blind. Technology is another big boon. Using technology in our organization, we impart IT skills and smartphone operation, which have a screen reading potentiality, which keeps us pace with the rest of the society. This has really reduced the boundary. There is no boundary. It's a seamless. Our communication has become seamless, which is true for all of you. So, with these two couple of examples, with the dreams we had for ourselves and for so many, we could transform the lives of hundreds and thousands of people, having our vision to touch million lives by 2030. We want to touch and transform 100,000 into 10, 10 lakh lives in our country. Because the population of persons with disability in our country is larger than the country's population of many European nations. So if we can make a difference in them, the GDP of the country will automatically go up. Dear friends, just imagine the plight of a girl born in a village to a poor family with a disability. Such kids become four times disabled. So we have to provide support and make sure they become taxpayers of the country. We want people with disability to become taxpayers of the country. <laughs> lead a life of dignity, lead a life of respect, and live like any other individuals, as disability is just a human diversity. With this, I once again, thank the organizers and all my young friends. This is the time you all should start dreaming big with determination, dedication, discipline. You can reach your destination, but don't stop. Continue to think beyond, and you will reach beyond. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>